We have updates to some stories this week on ThreatWire. Apple did their annual software operating system release this past week. iPhones can now run iOS 18 and computers can upgrade to macOS Sequoia. The upgrade to Sequoia has been causing widespread problems with security tools and other user issues. These security problems have manifested in issues with security tools like Sentinel-1, ESET, CrowdStrike, and more. Reports are saying that on the first day of release, a sales engineer from CrowdStrike professed that they would have to delay support for the new version. Sentinel-1 also had published reports of issues with the new operating system version. In their formal co publication, in contrast, they announced their compatibility with the new macOS version. On Mastodon, security researcher Will Dorman published a write-up of the discovered issues. The macOS stateful firewall no longer properly accounts for UDP, which has been causing DNS to fail for some applications. It has been discovered that responses from DNS are no longer being accepted as incoming connections by the stateful firewall. The firewall is blocking all incoming connections, so it's working in some ways, but not in others. A workaround has been found, which involves adjusting the firewall. The browser company of New York experienced their first major security incident since their inception. The browser company is the creator of the Arc Web Browser, which is a Chromium-based browser that is working to redesign the internet browsing experience. The Arc Browser uses Firebase as a backend for certain features, including the Boosts feature, which allows users to customize any website. There was a misconfiguration in the access control list for their Firebase endpoint. This misconfiguration enabled a boost to be assigned to any user. This CVE CVE 2024-45489 had the ability for remote code execution. The browser company believes after their investigation that no users were affected by this vulnerability and have mitigated the issue. Personally, I'm a Chrome user. However, I do have access to Arc. Just curious, what browser do you use? Let me know in the comments below. Telegram has made a subtle pivot in their compliance. In an update to their privacy policy as found by 404 Media, Telegram will now provide users' data to law enforcement agencies in response to legal orders. This user data can include information like IP addresses and phone numbers. Prior to this update, Telegram's policy only mentioned compliance of this sort in regards to terrorism cases. Now it states, if Telegram receives a valid order from the relevant judicial authorities that confirms you're a suspect in a case involving criminal activities that violates the Telegram's terms of service, we will perform a legal analysis of the request and may disclose your IP address and phone number to the relevant authorities. Earlier in the summer, the U.S. government made the final move to ban the sale and updates of the Kaspersky antivirus software within the United States. The final execution date for this order was to be on September 29, 2024. Since then, the company shuttered its U.S. arm on July 20th and has continued to make moves to extract its operations from U.S.-based entities. In early September, it alerted its U.S.-based customers that they, the customers, would continue to receive cybersecurity coverage from Pangos Group's Ultra AV antivirus solution. What Kaspersky didn't mention was how this new coverage would happen. This past week, Kaspersky customers logged on to find the Kaspersky antivirus tools deleted from the computers and the Ultra AV tools installed. The new antivirus was installed without consent from the computer user. It turns out every Kaspersky tool was replaced with tools from the Ultra AV suite without consent. This moment led to chaos from netizens worried that new malware was installed on their computer and confusion about where Kaspersky went. Users were reporting that when trying to uninstall the new Ultra AV tool, it would be reinstalled upon reboot. A semi-formal statement was finally made by the Kaspersky team on their company forum after the installation explaining the move. It was not received warmly by community members who immediately started having issues with the new tooling suite, like frozen machines, blocked necessary apps, and more. Were you a Kaspersky user? How did you react when you saw the new software installed? Do you feel like you had enough warning? I would love to read your replies in the comments. Also, a personal announcement. I launched a podcast with my friend She Networks. Many of you only know me here, but if you want to hear me talk about different things in tech besides cybersecurity and cybersecurity, please check it out. We called it Breaking the Internet, and I'll include links to the podcast in the description box down below.
If you enjoyed this ad-free show, please head over and support us over at patreon.com slash thatwire. If you want to find me online, you can find me everywhere at Ending With Allie. Good luck, have fun, and don't get caught.